So I want you to imagine the sight. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Adam alayhi salam his soul, all of the angels fell in sajda to him. They all fell in prostration. All, I mean, subhanAllah, trillions and trillions and trillions of angels. Imagine the sight, all in prostration to Adam alayhi salam. This is what he wakes up to, subhanAllah. Now, the sajda, the sujood, the prostration, uh, you know, just to, just to clarify here, it's not worship. They were not praying to Adam alayhi salam. And this was something that was done out of respect and out of, uh, you know, out of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in fact, commanding them to do so. And this is something that was actually done in previous nations. We see it in the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, where his parents and his brothers make sujood to him, they prostrate to him. And in fact, even in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, uh, when Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu came back from Asham, when he came back from Syria, and he saw the way that the Christians did sajda at that time, they prostrated to their monks, he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam and he did sujood to him. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, he corrected him, and he said that this is something that was allowed in nations before, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done away with it. Meaning, even the sajda that is done out of taqdeer and ihtiram, that is done out of respect and, and honoring a person, that was prohibited and the only thing left now was the sajda of ibadah, the prostration of worship, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this ummah clarifies tawheed, clarifies monotheism once and for all, okay? So all of these angels fall into sajda to Adam alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, illa Iblis. Iblis just stood there. And Iblis, you know, is, is the only one there who's actually not an angel in the first place, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored him gave him that company, gave him even the shape of an angel. And Iblis just stood there as the angels made sajda. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Aba wa stakbar. That, you know, he, he felt a sense of pride. He felt a sense of, of denial, of, of envy inside of him. And he even responded, Ana khayrun min. That I'm better than him. Khalaqtani min nar wa khalaqtahum min teen. That you created me from, from fire and you created him from dirt. Why should I make sujood to him? Why should I prostrate to this lowly creature? And Imam bin Sirin rahimahullah ta'ala, he says that Iblis was the first one to ever use qiyas, qiyas fasid, you know, false analogy, right? To make an analogy, to say, well, I'm clearly better than him because I've been made of fire and he's been made of dirt. And that makes Iblis also the world's first racist, right? SubhanAllah, because he thinks he's better because of his creation. He thinks he's superior. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, puts him down as a result of that. Now, uh, this sujood to Adam alayhi salam from the angels also shows that you are going to be in khidmah, you will be in service to this creation. And we've already mentioned that the angels are in service to us, obviously at the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iblis, you know, just couldn't handle this. And subhanAllah, you know, Iblis belittled him so much that he didn't even mention his name. Uh, Iblis says, أَرَأَيْتَكَ هَذَا الَّذِي كَرَّمْتَ عَلَيَّ You see this one that you've preferred to me. You know, I remember uh, in the presidential debates between John McCain and, and Barack Obama, where McCain said this one about Obama, and I'm not comparing McCain to Iblis or Obama to Adam alayhi salam, but this one, you know, was very degrading, right? That's exactly what Iblis did to Adam alayhi salam. He said, you've preferred and honored this one, this creation. I'm not even going to say his name. I'm not even going to mention him in an honored way over me. And this is the ingratitude of Iblis, the ingratitude of shaitan. Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him the wasf, the sign or, or the characteristic, the attribute of ingratitude? Because Allah has taken you from the earth. Allah has put you in paradise. Allah has given you the shape of an angel. Allah saved you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have left you with those other jinn that were battled. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recognized your ibadah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved you and he elevated you. And he's given you Jannah, you're in paradise, what more do you want? But still, Iblis was ungrateful, subhanAllah. And that ingratitude led him to his ultimate doom, subhanAllah. As a result of his ingratitude, did he gain anything? Did he gain the power of the earth again? Did he gain what he wanted? No, actually, he lost Jannah. He was reduced back to an ugly shape. So he, didn't re he, he was not able to keep the shape that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to him of a malak. And he was expelled and cursed and, and just despised as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described him. Ukhruj minha fa innaka rajim. Get out of here and you are a despised and despicable creation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And subhanAllah, we see from that as well that ingratitude is what causes a person not to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the weapon of shaitan. He comes to you and what does he say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That I will make them ungrateful. 
Because if they're ungrateful, they won't be driven to worship you anymore. Just like I'm not driven to worship as a result of my ingratitude. SubhanAllah, he knows his own shortcoming and that's the shortcoming he hopes to project on others. And the Prophet ﷺ, and this is very powerful, you know, he tells us that Iblis does have regrets here. He does have regrets, but it's not enough to regret. And if I was to ask the average Muslim, do you think that Shaytan ever feels bad about what he's done? I mean, the pride and the audacity that he had, most Muslims would say no. But the Prophet ﷺ says in the authentic hadith in Sahih Muslim, that when any person makes sujood, when the son of Adam prostrates, اعتزل الشيطان يبكي the shaytan actually takes to the side and he starts to cry. Shaytan starts to cry. يقول, he was commanded to make sujood. He was commanded to prostrate and he prostrated. And so Allah will give him paradise. And I was commanded and I disobeyed and for me is the fire. And what this shows us subhanAllah is that you know, crying is not enough. You know, when, when you do something bad, there's a saying from one of the famous ulama that uh, It's not true fear just to cry and to wipe your eyes when you've done something wrong. But he is the one who leaves that which caused him to fear Allah in the first place. Because shaytan, and it, you know, as much as he cries, as much as he feels bad about it, he never turns back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He continues to turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's a recipe for disaster. And in fact, Ibn Kathir rahimahullah says in this very collection of Al Bidayah wa Nihayah, he says that Shaytan cried four times. There are four times that Shaytan cried. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared him to be cursed. The second time, when Allah expelled him from paradise. The third time, when the Prophet was born. And the fourth time, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Surah Al-Fatiha. And so we end with the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the gift of Surah Al-Fatiha as was taught to us by the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in hopes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enter us into Jannah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make us from the blessed and those who are eternally rewarded. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope you enjoyed and benefited from this video. If you did, then please do share it. And if you'd like to follow the rest of the series, then please do click on the top box. And if you'd like to see all of the other episodes and the other videos we have to offer, then please click on the box under that. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more amazing content.